So if continuing in chapter four, we've done weak acids um, and they were weak monoprotic acids. So we've looked at some weak acid HA and when it um, dissociates, it's gonna go into H plus plus minus and we're calculating the concentration of H plus. What we need to look at in this chapter is polyprotic acids, which means that we are going to have more than one um, proton on this and we need to look at weak bases. What we're going to find for our polyprotic acids is that most cases we can ignore the second proton and we're going to find for our weak bases that the process is very similar to the weak acids. We're going to do an ice chart. We're going to look up a KB. It's a base, not an acid. We're going to solve for an X. We're going to realize the X is the concentration of hydroxide and we're going to run from there. So to start out and make sure we understand what's going on, we're going to mix a strong acid with a weak acid. We know if we have a strong acid, and we know HCl is a strong acid, we've memorized these, we know that its Ka is huge. In fact, the Ka's, the strong acids, I'm just going to shorthand it as an Sa, Ka for any strong acids is undefined. Because when we take a Ka, we're always going to divide by the initial concentration of the acid, which will be zero. Remember, Ka's go, or strong acids react and go 100% to product. So our Ka is so large as to be undefined. What does that mean? It means if we take our HCl and we put it in water, we're going to make H plus plus Cl minus. We can't do an ice chart because it's not equilibrium. So we're going to call it ICF, where F is going to be for final rather than equilibrium. If I start out with one of this and zero of these guys, I'm going to lose all of my HCl because it's a strong acid, so I end up with zero finally. I'm going to add one over here to both of these sides, and at the final amount, I'm going to have one molar of H plus and one molar of the Cl minus. So that's step one. Now, step two is that we're going to consider what's going to happen when we put the HClO in. Now, the HClO is going to dissociate or ionize, excuse me, into H plus plus ClO minus. Now we know this is a weak acid. Why? Because we memorized the strong ones and everything else is weak. We're going to look up its Ka. And when we look up the Ka for HClO, hypochlorous acid, we're going to realize that it is 2.9 times 10 to the minus 8. And so from there, we can do an ice chart. We're going to start out with one molar of our HClO. Now, the thing is, is that this is not going to be a zero on the product because we have put it in a solution of a strong acid. So our original concentration of H plus over here is the one molar from the strong acid. Now, that's going to affect the dissociation a lot because, in fact, it's going to shift the equilibrium back here. We remember Le Chatelier's principle. If we add a product, we shift our equilibrium back. This is still an equilibrium question, so we have our x's. So we're going to do minus x, plus x, and plus x. So we're going to have 1 minus x, 1 plus x, and x. So plugging it into the value for Ka. So we know that our um, Ka is equal to 2.9 times 10 minus 8. That's going to equal the concentration of H plus multiplied by the concentration of ClO minus over the concentration of HClO. From our ice chart on the previous page, that's going to be equal one plus x multiplied by x divided by one minus x and you go okay well we know we can approximate k is nice and small and our gut reaction is to approximate by removing this x on the bottom but we never said it had to be in the denominator what we said was that if k is small that the x with respect to the initial is so small that we can ignore it so that one minus x is about equal one. Well, that would mean that one plus x is also about equal to one. So we can take and remove it up here, which in fact ends our problem for us because it tells us that the concentration or the additional H plus from the weak acid is about equal to zero, which means that if we take and we mix, anytime we mix a strong acid with a weak acid, we're going to realize that we can ignore the weak acid. We did it right here. 
ignored it, the contribution from the secondary step, the weak acid, and all we have to look at is the strong acid. And we're going to take and we're going to expand that to a mixture of a polyprotic. So for polyprotic acids, polyprotic acids simply have more than one ionizable, removable H+. An example of this would be sulfurous. And for every H+, we are going to have a K because they come up off one at a time. So the first H plus that comes off is going to have a value of Ka1 because it's the first step, and we look our values of Ka up. And the second step, now notice the second value of K is much, much smaller than the first value of K. Well, why? Well, among other things now, this entire step here is, or this entire ion here is negative. If this is negative, it's going to want to gain a proton and not lose a proton. So this second step is, in fact, very, very, very weak. So Ka1 is going to be greater than Ka2. Now notice this is always going to happen. As we go through our Ka's in a polyprotic acid, they are going to become smaller. So therefore, most of the H plus comes from the first dissociation. And this means for almost all cases, we're going to have a Ka1 that is much, much greater than Ka2. And this is like mixing a strong acid with a weak acid. And the first thing we're going to do when we do this is we're going to ignore Ka2 and we're just going to use the first step. So, for an example, what is the pH of 0.15 molar carbonic acid? Well, we need the Ks. We have two Ks for this because we have two protons. When we look them up, we're going to get Ka1 is equal to 4.3 times 10 to the minus 7. And Ka2 is going to equal 4.7 times 10 to the minus 11. Now notice that Ka1 is much, much bigger. It's still small, but it's much bigger than Ka2. So we are going to ignore the second step, which just leaves us like a classic weak acid question. We're going to take carbonic acid. We're going to put it in water. We're going to let it dissociate to H plus plus HCO3 minus. We're going to write an ice chart. We're going to put our initial concentration in. These are zeros. It's going to go down by X up by x on the product side. And we're going to get that 4.3 times 10 to the minus 7 is equal to x squared over 0.15 minus x. We're going to realize that k is small. And again, small is going to be less than about 10 to the minus 4. This is much less than that. And we're going to set that x equal to 0. And when we solve for this, multiplying through by 0.15 and taking the square root, we're going to get the x, and we're always going to stop and make sure we know what x is equal to. x is equal to the concentration of H+, plus, and that is equal to 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4. And pH is the minus base 10 log of that, and that equals 3.60. All right, we're going to ignore the second step, because the k is much, much smaller. It's like adding a weak acid to a strong acid. All right, so what about sulfuric? Well, we know sulfuric is strong, but it's only the first H plus that's strong. So Ka1 is very large, and it's very large to the point of being undefined. And we know that it's going to go 100% towards products. Ka2, we would look up. Ka2 is not very, very large. Ka2 is equal to 0.012, and it unfortunately is neither very large nor very small, so we are stuck with the quadratic on this one. So step one. Step one is 100% because sulfuric acid is strong, and it's going to dissociate into H plus plus HSO4 minus. It's going to start out here with a concentration of 0.1. All of it, that's an F, sorry, for final not equilibrium, all of it is going to go away, so we have zero at the end. This is going to be 0, and 0 is going to gain 0.1. Again, we're not using x's here because we've got one arrow because this is a strong acid. Don't lose track of that, giving us 0.1 and 0.1. So we have now Ka2, and we have some values for our concentrations of our ion, HSO4 minus, and the H plus that's in there. All right, now we have. HSO4 minus, the step, second step here, going to dissociate two arrows, 
in 2H plus, plus SO4 2 minus, our Ka2, which we look up, is equal to 0.012, and this is going to equal the concentration of H plus times SO4 2 minus over HSO4 minus. So we need a nice chart for this. So we know we need a nice chart because we have a K value. We get two arrows. We know it's not strong. And from the first page, from the dissociation or ionization of sulfuric acid, we have a 0.1 on the salt hydrogen sulfate and 0.1 on the H plus. This is going to go down by X. 0.1 minus X. This is going to go up by X and X. So we have 0.1 plus X and X. So math-wise, 0 0.012 is going to equal X times 0 0.1 plus X over 0 0.1 minus X. We'd love to set our X equal to zero, but we cannot because this is not small. In order to be small, it's got to be less than about 10 to the minus 4, which it isn't. So let's multiply through. We're going to get 0 0.012 times 0.1 minus x, I'm going to be sloppy with the sig figs just to make it a little easier to do math, is equal to 0.1 times x plus x squared. If we combine our like terms on this and finish multiplying through, we are going to get that x squared is equal to, excuse me, x squared plus 0.112x minus 0.0012 is equal to 0. Plugging that into the quadratic, our x will be equal to either 0 0.0098 or x is equal to minus 0.12. We know x cannot be negative. Again, there's no miracles. So that if that is the case and we're solving for the concentration of H plus, concentration of H plus is equal to 0.1 plus x, which is equal to 0.1. I'm going to round this to two sig figs and call this 0.11. And therefore, the pH of this is going to be the minus base 10 log of that. And our pH is equal to 0.96. And yes, that is a complete pain. All right, so we've got ourselves some nice strong bases. We know our strong bases are going to be group 1 hydroxides. We have the group 2 hydroxides, and those are going to be calcium, strontium, and barium hydroxide, those each contain two hydroxides and associate to make two. Make sure you've memorized those. The rest of the bases are going to be weak. There are a few strong bases, but they're in organic solutions but in water. The remainder of the bases are weak and they contain nitrogen. And one way to look at it is to say they have nitrogen and they are neutral. They're going to have a lone pair in the nitrogen, and that lone pair can accept an H plus make it a nice bronze dead base. We can take any one of these hydrogens and replace it with something organic, meaning something containing carbon. So we could have CH3, one of the hydrogens replaced, followed by an NH2. We could have a couple more of them and have in fact CH3 we could replace all three of them with an N. We tend to, if we put something organic, we put it in the front. And if we look at our bases, our bases, we're going to shorthand as a B. So as we do our KBs on the next slide, they look like this. Our weak bases are like our weak acids. Only a small fraction of them are going to react. So therefore, they're weak electrolytes. We need an ice chart. We need to solve for X, calcu calculate the pOH from the ice chart, and then use pH plus pOH equals 14 to get the pH. And here, it's um, very, very similar to finding the pH of a nice weak base. Our reaction is going to be this. Our weak base is going to react with water. It is going to take and put a hydrogen onto that weak base, and we're going to write that as a pH plus, and it's going to leave us hydroxide. So if we take our B, our weak base, we react it with water to make a BH plus and an OH minus, our K sub B is going to equal BH plus times OH minus over the concentration of the base. This is the base ionization constant, but we're just going to call it KB. We call it KB because it's a base. And as the value of KB goes up, the strength of this base is going to go up. And we're going to do our ice charts just the same way as we did 
the ice charts for the weak acids. So the best way to that to do that is to just do that. So if we have trimethylamine, so first of all, how do we know it's a base? Well, we know it's a base because it has that nitrogen with a lone pair on it. And sometimes you're going to have to draw the Lewis structure on these to make sure it makes sense. Remembering that a CH3 group is going to be just attached with a single bond to anything. And so this would have three of those CH3 groups on it and leaving us with a nice nitrogen with a lone pair. It's going to accept a proton from water. Again, remember that water can be considered to be an H plus attached to an OH minus. So if this H plus gets stuck right here, it's going to leave us hydroxide. This is going to give us a basic solution. Our KB, we can look up and find a 6.5 times 10 to the minus 5. Because this is weak, we need an ice chart, and we're going to then solve for the X. So for our ice chart, trimethylamine reacts with water to make trimethylammonium and our hydroxide. We start out with 0.25 molar of the amine. We're going to ignore the water because it's a pure liquid, and we're going to have zeros for our products. Our change is going to be x, 0.25 x, plus x, plus x, and x, and x. So that we have our case of B, which we've looked up as 6.3 times 10 to the minus 5, is going to equal x squared over 0.25 minus x. When we solve for our x, and again, k is small, so we're going to assume that this x right here is equal to zero. When we solve for it, we're going to get that x. We're going to keep track of what x equals. x equals the concentration of the hydroxide. This is a base, not an acid, so we're not going to solve for H plus. We're going to solve for hydroxide. And our concentration of our hydroxide for this nice weak acid is going to equal our weak base is going to equal 0 0.0040 molar. Our pOH is going to be the minus base 10 log of the OH. That's going to equal 2.40. And we remember that pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So pH for this is going to equal 11.60. So let's do a few more. What is the pH of 0 0.150 molar pyridine? You go, okay, well, what's pyridine? Well, pyridine is C5H5N. Then you're going to find it's got three bonds on the nitrogen and a nice lone pair. It's a nice weak base. When we look up at KB, KB is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 9. And if the KBs aren't on in your book, then just Google them. Um, we know that this is a base. This is going to react with water, so we know what to do here. We can either write the formula for the base, or we can just call it B. I'm going to just call it B. Our base is going to react with water. It's going to make BH plus, plus OH minus. If we do our ice, we're going to start out with 0 0.015. We're going to ignore the water because it's a liquid. We have 0 and 0. This is going to go down by X. This is going to go up by x, by x, so that we have 1.7 times 10 to the minus 9 is equal to x squared times 0 0.015 minus x. k is small, so we're going to set that x equal to 0. And when we cross multiply and take the square root, we're going to get x. Because it's a base, it's going to equal hydroxide is equal to 5. 0 0.05 times 10 to minus 6 molar pOH minus base 10 log of that is going to equal 5.30 and pH is going to equal 8.7. Pyridine is a pretty weak base. It's very smelly, but that's a different story. All right, the last one. This is a nice weak base. And it is a vasodilator, meaning it's going to relax the blood vessels so the blood vessels or blood can form, flow more easily. We could write the formula down, but again, I'm not going to. I'm going to call it base. We know our base is going to react with water to make BH plus, so H minus. We know our KB here will have the form of BH plus multiplied by OH minus 
over the original concentration of the base. So what do we have? Well, we have initially for our base a concentration of 0.12. And we have the pH of our solution. Well, we know the pH is equal to 9.5. And you go, well, that doesn't help any because that's an H plus and this is a base, which is an OH minus, and that's true. But we remember that pH plus pOH is 14, which tells us that pOH is equal to 14 minus 9.5, which is equal to 4.5. You go, okay, I got the pOH, but I need the OH in order to finish this and solve this. Well, the concentration of OH just equal 10 to the minus 4.5, and that's just number, and that is equal to 0.000032. You go, okay, well, what is that? Well, that's right here. That's at equilibrium. That's 0.000032. It started at zero, and it went up by that amount. Well, if hydroxide goes up by that amount, so does the BA plus, and our B had to go down by that amount. Now that's a tiny value compared to 1, 2, so I'm going to ignore it and call it 0.2. This is going to be up by this value and up by this value. And when we plug this in, we are going to get KB is equal to 0 0.000032, the quantity squared divided by our original value, 0.12. And when we do the math, we're going to get Kb is equal to 8.5 times 10 to the minus 9. So if Kb is equal to 8.5 times 10 to the minus 9, we can also find a pKb. Now, why would we want to do this? Well, a lot of acids and bases, their strength is not tabulated by the Ks, it's tabulated by the pKs. We know a P is a minus base 10 log. So a pKb is minus base 10 log of Kb. So we'll take the minus base 10 log of that, and we will get a value of 